Hello there, I hope you're well. If you don't know me yet, I'm Katla Mwari. On a previous video titled, Why do we view white people as better than black people? I received a few interesting comments which got me thinking that why don't I delve deeper into this topic? And that is what this video is all about. Starting off with a comment by Casey Chipinski. This comment started off by telling me that this is ridiculous, but we're not going to dwell on that. Uh, I think let's start off by getting some context. I am South African, was born in South Africa, raised in South Africa, I live in South Africa. And South Africa is a country in which white people have had a superior status uh, in terms of academic opportunities, employment opportunities, infrastructure, power, political, economical, and in so many other areas. For this reason, it is expected that white people will be superior in many areas. When you in South Africa see a white person who is not doing well, it's kind of like a surprise because you're like, this person or this race has had a head start. So it's kind of uncommon to see them in a lower status of life. And to my fellow South Africans, let me know if this opinion that I'm holding and that I'm sharing is true or not. And even if you're not South African, let me know if this makes sense if you are getting the context of where I am coming from in sharing this view. Casey also mentioned that races do not operate in a collective, and I absolutely agree. In every race, there are evil racist people, and there are good non-racist people. And we cannot have a, a blanket approach to this matter. We need to approach it knowing that in every race, they are good, they are bad. They are racist and non-racist people. Casey also mentioned that if you think that white people are better than black people, then that's your problem. And for this, I raise my hand to acknowledge that yes, it is a problem that I have had. And I know that it is a problem that many other people have. If you don't think in that way, if you don't see it in that way, if you don't have that problem, then that's good. That's excellent. We, we appreciate that there are people who don't live or think in that way. But I realized my problem, but not only that, I created the video to highlight this negative and uh, wrong way of thinking with the hopes that everyone else who is in the same boat as me will see their problem and will work towards solving that problem. Yes, it's not an easy thing to acknowledge that for years I have been uh, viewing other races, people of other races as being better or superior than mine. But by hiding it or by lying to myself or, you know, avoiding that truth, it doesn't help anyone, does it? So the point of making that video was to say, well, how it started, what inspired it was that I realized this evil, negative, subconscious way of thinking that I had. And I was like, man, I wonder how many other people think in this way. We need to address it. We need to acknowledge it. And we need to work towards coming out of this negative way of thinking. Casey went on to say that all races of people are equal in America and have equal rights. And I believe that we are equal. If you watch the entirety of the first video, you'll know that I did say that we are all equal. But though we are equal, it does not take away from the fact that we have been conditioned to believe otherwise, to view a certain race as superior and another race as inferior. That conditioning has left in us a lot of negative effects. And the purpose of the first video was to address these very effects. The purpose of this video is to continue to address these effects. Examples of these are everywhere. Black people like to relax and straighten their hair to make it look more white. Why? Is that not because we feel like our hair is not beautiful enough? It's not cool enough? Someone might leave a comment saying that no, it's because natural hair is difficult to maintain, maybe even um, expensive to maintain. And maybe there's truth to that, but is that the majority of people? Is that the reason for the majority of people who are choosing to relax and straighten their hair? I don't think so. 
We have gone to the extent of constantly wearing wigs made of fake synthetic hair or even other people's hair. Other people's hair. We are a race with very unique hair, like very unique and beautiful hair. But instead of embracing that uniqueness, instead of walking in that beauty, we go and do different things to try and be like every other race. If that is not spitting on our own image, our own uniqueness and beauty, then I don't know what is. For me, that is one of the indicators that we find white people's hair to be beautiful, that flow, that length. We find that to be more beautiful than our own curly, beautiful hair. And it's not because we are not beautiful, but it's because for many years we have thought, we have been conditioned to believe that that was beautiful and what we have was not. What we are dealing with here is psychological damage that came from the fact that for a very long time, white people were the dominant group and they preferred certain things. They regarded certain things of higher value. And we, in turn, without even thinking about it, regarded the same things of higher value. We preferred the same things that they uh, preferred, again, without thinking twice. An example of this is white people at some stage believed that black people were inferior, were less than, they made fun of them, they mo mocked black people. And what did we do as black people amongst ourselves? We praise the yellow bones, the light, the people who are uh, of a lighter complexion. But what do we do to the darker looking ones? We mock them, we make fun of them. From as little as primary school, we do that. We make jokes, we make fun of them, we give them names. Mnyamane, Mansu. Where do these names come from? Who taught us to laugh at our fellow black people who are just darker than other black people? Who taught us that? Chris Rock, in his most recent stand-up comedy, did a similar thing by kind of mocking or making fun of a, a, a guy with a darker skin complexion and he kind of praised the guy who was lighter in complexion. Take a look at this. Because even black people want to know... Shit, we check behind them ears. That's a scientific test. Because <laughs> you got to see what kind of black child you going to get. Is this a Steph Curry baby? Or a Draymond Green baby? <laughs> That Draymond baby gonna have a hard life. <laughs> the Draymond black baby. That nigga dark. He sneak up on you black. <laughs> we at Draymond right here. Hey! <laughs> hey! Put a bell on, nigga, put a bell. You gonna have to change your name to Draymond Green. <laughs> I don't know a blacker name than that. That shit is black on paper. If you type Draymond Green in the Airbnb, that shit will log off automatically. See that? Anyway, a quick fun fact. Here in South Africa, when black people refer to an employer, a boss, or someone in a superior position, they call them Mlungu or Lekhoa. Mlungu or Lekhoa means white, white person. But this title is given to a boss, an employer, um, a superior, regardless of their race. And do you see what this implies? It implies that only white people can be bosses or maybe all white people are bosses. Think about this. Think about it. The last point on Casey's comment is that what inequality is there even anymore? In South Africa, white people were the minority, but although they were the minority, they oppressed the rest of the population through apartheid. And because of this, they had power and were superior politically, socially, economically.
meaning that it was very rare to see white people at the bottom of the rung. That's where we found black people, right? And even today, there are fewer poor white people than there are poor black people. And this is not because white people are superior, but rather because of three reasons. Maybe there are other reasons, but I'm going to focus on three main reasons. One, they had the head start because of apartheid. Two, they are fewer in number than the black people. Three, they look out for each other and support each other, which brings us to a comment by Tabia Nong. So this is something very common where we find white people being given jobs that require credentials even if they don't have the credentials. And a black person who would apply for the same job would need the credentials. So already there's an unfair advantage. So in addition to having the head start in the apartheid days, they are now still doing what Tabia is mentioning here. We've now spoken about South Africa, right? Let's move to America, where the stats differ slightly in that black people are fewer in number and white people are more in America. I'm of the view that while in South Africa, black people have been judged to be inferior from the apartheid days and even to this very day, in America, it's slightly different in that black people are the ones through their deeds who kind of cast an inferior uh, label upon themselves. I think that black Americans have kind of set the bar or the standard too low for themselves, thus attracting the label of being inferior towards themselves. Without someone else judging them, I believe that they have brought the label onto themselves. And hear me out, don't, don't log off yet, don't leave yet, don't just be offended and go to the comment section. Listen first and then let's talk in the comment section, shall we? Although few in number, black Americans account for the highest number of pregnancies, highest number of abortions, majority of the crimes, terrible, trashy music that is a applauded and even awarded that is made to even trend they account for the trashiest of neighborhoods and these things they they just these behaviors are inferior and it is because of these inferior behaviors these actions these deeds that the label of inferior is then placed on the black americans Next up, we are addressing the comment from Cam4K Studios, who has made it clear that he's a Gen Z white guy for context. And thank you so much for your comment and everything that you've put there. I'd like us to start off with a comment that you only started feeling inferior recently. Now, the feeling of or the idea of feeling inferior is not new someone who has been oppressed, especially oppressed for several years. One will only oppress someone that they believe is less than. You will never oppress someone that you think is above you. You'll never oppress someone that you have respect for. You'll never oppress someone that you hold in high regard. You oppressing me means that you already identify me as being less than, whether less than you politically, um, militarily, um, economically, in any way. For you to oppress me shows that you find me to be less than. Hence, it is easier for us who have been oppressed for the longest time, especially black people in South Africa, to be I don't want to say comfortable, but comfortable with the idea of being oppressed. I hope that clarifies that first portion. Secondly, I'd like to address the part where you said that it's, it's a black culture to refuse to forgive and to forget. In South Africa, uh, apartheid ended in 1994, and I'd say that it's, it's relatively still fresh for a lot of people. Uh, many people have been affected directly and indirectly, and they are still seeing the effects of apartheid 
even to this very day, where people are staying, I'm not even going to get into de the details of it, but people are still seeing the results of apartheid in their lives today. Personally, I, I, I'm not for holding, harboring evil and evil will against white people, any other race. I do not allow it to define me. I do not allow it to define how I relate to people re regardless of their race, right? Um, but I've realized that it has created a prejudice in me against my own race, which is why I decided to even record that first video to identify, help others identify and together work uh, towards erasing this negative prejudice. I'm all for forgiving the past and everyone that is involved in hurting black people. Um, I just don't want to be ignorant of the psychological damage and effects that it has on me and on other people, regardless of how much you're forgiven. Because after you hurt me, um, let's say I, I, I trusted you, you're my friend, you're my whatever. Um, I trusted you and you hurt me, you broke my trust, you oppressed me in one way or another. I may forgive you and I may love you after the, after the, after the fact, but it doesn't mean that what you did to me has no psychological effect has no has not left any psychological damage which affects how i do life following that event i hope that makes it clear but i'm totally for forgiveness i'm totally for moving on i just think that maybe for some people in south africa 1994 2023 it may or may not be um a difficult ask um for certain people. Thirdly, um, I'd like to say thank you for clarifying that you are not racist and yeah, that's good. Please, please, I'm glad to hear that and please continue. Fourthly, although I am in South Africa, I have noticed the um, behavior against white and Asian people in America. I think a lot of this is due to exaggerated racist claims, which is propagated by mainstream media. I must say that the situation is bad there and what you guys are going through is in fact racism and it's not nice. And I know that as a black person saying that a white person is going through racism, some people may not like it, but I think we just need to be honest. We shouldn't deal with this based on our emotions because if we do that, we're just going to have a cycle of who's oppressing who. White people oppress black people. Now it's time for black people to oppress white people. And then it's just a negative cycle that never ends. Let's acknowledge that yes, in some cases, what is being said to be racism is not racism. And by by accepting these lies, we are just going to allow the media and selfish people to have their way and to make things very difficult, not just for white people, not just for Asian people, but for black people, white people, Asian, colored, everyone alike. Back to the show, everybody <laughs> trying to be a victim. Like, well, what's this girl, uh, Meghan Markle? Oh. Seem like a nice lady. <laughs> Just complaining. I was like, didn't she hit the light skin lottery? <laughs> hit the light skin lottery and still going off complaining. They're so racist. They wanted to know how brown the baby's gonna be. I'm like, that's not racist. <laughs> Now, on your comment regarding black people overly celebrating things or achievements that might seem minute, my request to you is that with us acknowledging that there are so many bad examples that have been, you know, made to trend, that have been made to uh, be famous, that are even rich, but giving young black people terrible um, examples, I think it's only fitting that when a black person uh, does and accomplishes something great, let's celebrate it, let's, let's make noise about it so that the young people can see that actually all these people that are just showing me negativity, they're not worth it. I should rather aspire towards this other thing, this positive thing. So with that understanding, I think I'm more comfortable with us 
overly celebrating minute achievements, positive achievements that set positive role models for black people. And I hope it makes sense. In conclusion, I'd like to acknowledge how we as black people perpetuate this negative image that um, other people, other races have of us and sometimes we have of ourselves and each other. Our music, we produce, celebrate, share and, and cause to trend a uh, reward music that promotes promiscuity, wretchedness, pride, cruelty, murder. For what reason? Why do you want to celebrate such a thing? You know, for example, Cardi B, WAP, WAP. Why do you want to celebrate such a thing? Why do you want to share such a thing? Why do you want to create a reel with such a thing? You know, it was even awarded. What message are you sending to people, to your child, a young person who wants to be a musician? Are you saying that for you to succeed as a musician, you need to be talking about what are you trying to say? What image is that of us as black people? Secondly, on our social media, we promote things like twerking instead of something that builds. Yes, it might seem fun, it might seem insignificant, but we have children who are watching us. We have other people whose moral fiber has not yet been built. And by seeing us just sharing these things, it's gonna be like, oh, okay, so what I need to be doing in order for me to be trending, in order for people to be liking my things, is to be half naked in all of my pictures, is to try to twerk in some of my videos and reels, and that's how I will be popular, because that is what is being made popular. The things that build, the things that educate, no, that's not what we're for as black people. These are the things are what we are for, so this is a part that I need to be taking. We can't just be doing that. In our politics, especially here in South Africa, we applaud tenderpreneurs. We applaud people that hurt our fellow black people. How many deals do we know of where our tax money was meant to improve the lives of uh, people in villages, but that money was used by a tenderpreneur in order to uh, build himself or herself a mansion and to buy cool cars and cool clothes that they come onto social media and and shine and and you know and trend about but no one takes the time to call that person out to say no yes you're shining yes you're wearing uh, these fancy clothes and staying in this fancy house and driving this fancy car but in actual fact you ought to be ashamed because this is money that people we're supposed to get RDP houses with, water and sanitation with. But here you are flaunting all of this. But do we call them out? No. What do we do instead? We post them on our WhatsApp statuses. We post them on our stories. We like them. We follow them. We cause them to trend. And what are we teaching them? That it's okay to do this to your fellow black person. What are we teaching the upcoming generation? That it's okay to steal money that was meant to improve your fellow black person's life and people will celebrate you for that. In our own projects and hustles, what do we do? Do we support each other? Do we share each other's work? Do we share each other's projects? No, we don't. If anything, we ask our mothers for discounts, discounts that we would never ask from a white person. When someone is saying, this is my project, this is my event, this is what I'm working on, do we say, okay, it's not really for me, but let me share with somebody else. Or it is for me, but actually, I, I just don't want to support you. I'd rather support a celebrity that doesn't care about me, that doesn't really need my money, than to give it back to you. And when white people uh, take each other's CVs, put each other in work, put each other in projects and all of that, what do we do? We complain about it instead of learning to say, we also need to support each other. We also need to build each other. In our politics, what do we do? Our politicians fail to be accountable. We fail to hold them accountable, but we just continue with a victim mentality. We are the way we are because of the apartheid government. We are where we are without what we need because of the apartheid government. Instead of holding our politicians accountable, instead of calling them out, instead of saying that, yes, the uh, apartheid government has 
played a role in where we are. But what about you as people who have been in power since 1994? In our beauty, we hate our own hair. We wear wigs. We wear weaves, people's hair. And what else do we do? We bleach our own skin. We are not inferior. Our behavior is what is inferior. All what I've said is embarrassing. We're living like clowns on the face of the earth and we're acting like that is normal. And when other races look at us as inferior because of this embarrassing behavior, we want to be shocked. We want to call it racism instead of taking a moment to say, why are they saying this about us? Are they right in any of what they're saying? Are there areas in which we ought to be improving? We need to remember that what we popularize in our time is what our young people are going to aspire towards. Your children, your nephew, your niece, your cousin, your grandchild, that is what they're going to aspire towards. And do you want them aspiring towards corruption, promiscuous living, crime, teenage pregnancy, murder, abortion, dirt and filth, trashy music? Is that what you want for them? If it is, then definitely something is more wrong than I thought it was. And if not, which I hope is the case, then let's acknowledge this as a problem and start working towards it. What makes us inferior? It's not a matter of intelligence. There are many, countless black people that are intelligent. There are many black people that have gone to excellent academic institutions and have done just as well as the white people. And what do we do? We trust that they will make things different. We vote for them. We put them in positions of power, positions of authority. And what do they do in turn? They go, they steal, they just make a mess of things and leave things destroyed. Examples of this is VBS Bank. Not only did they steal, but they stole to the point where old black people were left in a very dire situation. And is that what we want to call black excellence? Really? Is that not inferior behavior? Majority of African governments, let's speak specifically to South African governments, are doing things that people never even knew about when the white people were in power. Load shedding was never a thing. Failing, of, failing to service um, power stations was never a thing in the apartheid government. Yes, they were oppressing, but they cared for their people. You are now in power. We're expecting that you'll say, Oh, our people were oppressed all these years. Let's make things better for them. But instead, you destroy what the white people even left us in. What do you call that? Is that not inferior? Are you to be shocked when white people call us inferior after you behave in that way? Many of us as black people aspire to stay in white neighborhoods. Why? Because it's cleaner there. There's less noise there. Less crime there. But why don't we create the same thing for ourselves? Sometimes we just visit a beach or a park and what do we do? We leave a mess there. We leave cans, bottles there. Not because there's no bin, but because for some other reason we think that the floor is the bin. I don't even understand the thinking behind that. And just try, try to tell that person to say, why are you throwing that on the bin? Try to tell that person, why are you making noise? It's past noise time. Or this is a park where people are here to relax and to unwind. Why are you making so much noise through your boot? And just see the behavior that comes from there. See how much they attack you for that. And is that not behavior of inferior standard? We want to shout and scream and talk about black excellence. But where is a black excellence when we are without power for four to six hours a day due to load shedding? Where is the black excellence when there are so many fatherless homes, especially black people's homes? Where is the black excellence where a government is failing, a black government is failing its own black people? Where is the black excellence where the roads, the schools, hospitals are no longer being maintained? Grass, just grass outside is not being cut. Where is the black excellence when the standard of living was better during the apartheid days under a white government than they are today post-apartheid under a black government? 
Where's a black excellence when we are still aspiring for white made technology instead of starting something of our own and pushing something of our own? And when we do try to trust in our own people and the products and the services that they have to offer, what do they do to us? They either give us terrible quality or turn out to be lying, scamming, fraudulent, corrupt human beings. Now, instead of being triggered or offended, ask yourself, am I psychologically free or am I lying to myself? Our behavior, what we do, is what is inferior, not who we are as black people.